Hello everyone, welcome back to Silver Tears Tarot and to today's reading. We're going to do um, a reading about what it, what this energy that you guys have been emailing me about overnight where you feel like there's something on the edge and you want to understand kind of what can you do? It feels like they're on the edge of waking up to me um, is, is how one person put it. And I really just love that because I could kind of feel it in the energy. Um, so we're going to look into that. It'll be a general reading as always. It's going to be a general reading for this collective. And, um, you know, it's not going to resonate with everybody. I say this in every reading, but for everybody, um, they've always got to have their first reading. And I want to make sure people get the message. Um, these readings are all very much connected. So if it is your reading um, and you you really feel like you resonate with it, you may want to subscribe. You may want to take a look at some of the other videos because they're all very much connected. Um, so let's jump into it. Let's take a look at the energetic backdrop for today let's go ahead and take a look at that energetic and emotional backdrop what you guys are in you've got the ooh five of wands it's an easy does it going with the motion or not motions going with the energy kind of day going with the flow um which is a little bit more it's a little bit more reasonable than what we've had in the last couple of days where it's been kind of a frustrating feeling Ooh, going with the flow and feeling very full of something, very full emotionally of something. Yeah, so maybe your person is on the edge of waking up to you, but this is actually even more significant than that. With the Ten of Cups, it's the feeling of if they do wake up to you, understanding a little bit more of how important this bond is. So they get that it's important. They don't necessarily understand what to do with it. But with this being paired with this emotion of just um, being able to roll with it, that's pretty significant. And this is very heavy in your person's energy. So as we were saying yesterday, where the energy was pretty much shared, um, sometimes it's shared, sometimes it's heavier more than one and the other. This is more heavily leveraged in your person's energy. So they're feeling that ability to be moved as well as that um the the recognition i guess is what i want to say of the of the role that you play and the significance that you have so the person who said that they, it feels like my person is on the edge of waking up to me um the question that they also asked was how could i prod them and should i you know and so we'll look into what your actions should be but we're getting a little feel for what's happening here. Um, and next, we're going to ask a little bit more about the nature of kind of what's happening in the relationship today and what's changed. Why does it seem like they're on the edge of waking up to you? And we know some of you are in communication, but the communication isn't super strong or um, could it needs to there's that vulnerability that doesn't feel very comfortable. And we know that that make it tougher before it gets easier. Um, but I'm curious to see what happens with this because we've got a lot of people that are not even in communication and their, their person wants to reach out and sees the value all of a sudden in them. Um, curious to know where you're at with this but let's we might look at that um in the extended too just to, like we did yesterday we did a, a question i didn't expect to come up where we looked at oh yeah how are you going to be with this you know when it happens um so the ace of shells we've got them still turned off um their spigot of emotion their little faucet of emotion is still kind of turned off here that's that's a not necessarily a great feeling and then we've got this five of acorns in reverse just like the five of wands in reverse their emotion isn't particularly this is almost a depressive energy and yet there's a lot of activity underneath the surface it's interesting um and coming off of some of that frustration energy that we've had over the last few days, then this this still feels a lot warmer. But there is that sense of I'm going with the flow and I'm not pushing anything too hard. So they do feel drawn to um, to move your direction, though, whether that means communication or um, trying to get closer. I question their ability to do it with that ace of shells in the reverse. We've got the seven of shells here in the upright. They're understanding that this is something that they can do. There, There is a decision that they can make. They have a few different ways they can proceed, and they're still working through kind of what that means and what those ways might bring for them. So it's still a little bit of a, a feeling of holding back. Um, 
We've got the page of crystals coming out here, and it's an honorable mention. I just kind of dropped it. I didn't think it was going to be part of the reading, but it is um, It is talking about, so the reason that they're having this shift here is because of lessons that they're learning and maybe even lessons that we would say they have made it as far as having learned, um, but it's hmm, still a lot of challenge in this energy. I still wonder if they're going to be able to reach out. Let's. I can't wait to see kind of what's happening with the relationship itself and as we ask the question because this is just in the energy of the day so we have page of shells that's page of cups energy page of water energy um it's it's got an inspired feeling to it, it reminds me a little bit of this ten of cups that we're seeing here but with the wishy-washiness of the seven of shells um i'm not really sure if again if we see the the ability to move forward we do see a desire um but can they do it uh let's see here ten of acorns well that's fire energy again but with this the, it's like they feel like they have a role to play and they feel like they need to get it right but they're not necessarily they haven't sussed out exactly what right means yet so that's a difficult little challenge another reason why you may see if they start to overthink this you might not hear from them um and the thing is they're in a place where as we've seen with their healing if you hear from them you're healing from somebody who is not yet healed so you're going to see some things that are maybe a little bit awkward we have the five of feathers in reverse here though um and that tells me it's a little bit more like they're pure of heart they're not necessarily coming at this with a feeling like they need to accomplish something specific and that they need to do so at any cost it, it really doesn't have that feeling of doing things necessarily even for the wrong reasons but we've also got the five of shells that comes out here oh my goodness and the six of crystals coming out feeling like this okay so I'll explain. The five of shells, and, and that's that. We're going to turn the rest of these over. The five of shells is, is water energy. So this is like the five of cups in reverse. It's one of my favorite energies where it's a little bit more even keeled. It's not so emotionally driven toward the negative where the focus is on the negative. It's a bit, it's the inability to see the, the, the sad side. The part that they're ashamed of but also to be able to see the opportunity which rings true with the rest of this energy but with the six of crystals this is them recognizing and being aware that you have not received what you've deserved and that it makes sense to um to make that right it's almost so i don't see the justice card here but i kind of feel it um hmm that's that's very promising. So I know they might not be, um, uh, or they're not going to be healed if you see them come back just yet. But feeling that six of crystals this way, that tells me that you may see some really positive behaviors out of them nonetheless. And with the queen of acorns, it's more of that sort of, it's not a super fast moving energy. It isn't, it, it reminds me of this five of feathers that air of energy, that air, air energy that's like the five of swords where they're not doing things for the wrong reasons. They're not doing things like just because they have to win, you know. Um, and with this queen of acorns, you've got a little bit more of that kind of feeling as well. Um, it's the feeling of being able to say, I'm going to slow down and look at this and do things for the right reasons. That's got That's got kind of that feel to it. Huh. So this is more of a stabilizing energy than maybe we've seen in the last few days and yet it's difficult to say how they're going to register it because they're drawn toward you it's like they want to move toward you they want to make a move toward you feels like as this person said my person's on the edge of waking up to me um, but let's look into that what's happening with the relationship right now they feel like they're on the verge of waking up to you um, tell us a little bit more about what, what do you need to know about the relationship itself? What is happening? What's changing? What We know there's change. We see change all over it. But what is happening there? Okay, moving more into balance. This is a quiet balance, though, you guys. It's a very reasonable, quiet, nothing moving too quickly sort of balance. Um, 
<laughs> we have the nine of wands also coming out. Okay, incredibly promising. This is guard being dropped, walls being dropped. Still too much of an attempt to make um, control, like to create control on their part. But it's, uh, I feel like I got to pull another one out of here. But we've got walls being dropped that are usually constitute, they usually constitute resistance. Um, still things are not moving forward as quickly as they'd like. We saw in, um, I think it was yesterday, I, and I think it was in the extended reading, we finally saw that star come out in the upright, and it was very promising because it was a uh, looking into the future as much as you reasonably can, you know, because it's so much going to be impacted by people's free will. That's why we don't really ask the question, what's going to happen? We ask the question, what's what are you kind of moving toward? Because it's like the energy is going in that direction, but then on top of that, you're going to place your free will. So is your person. So are those third party energies. And so we don't always know how things are going to turn out, but we can say, here's the direction it's headed. So yesterday we were asking a little bit more of a, all right, and then where's it headed? Which means, you know, the more that you look into the future, the more um, unlikely it is to be clear. And um, it was fairly positive though it was hey you are going to get there this is going to happen and and it is going to happen for your person what they need their development was going to happen um in context it was really about them but it was uh, in relevant it was relevant to you and the bond that you two share um but they're moving toward a balance there is a balance that's happening here that i think really kind of changes things especially with these walls coming down that's less resistance to making a positive outcome it's less resistance to what you would hope would happen here you know oh and there it is again okay so that's the nine of wands in the reverse and i was just thinking i want to see the universe double down on this one but you can't say that like you can't say that anyway so here's the nine of acorns totally doubling down on that and saying yes this is their walls falling to a certain degree feels pretty temporary feels pretty temporary. There's a lot of cycling that's been happening with your person where the walls come up, the walls go down. It's almost like waves on the ocean, you know, and sometimes it's way beneath the surface and sometimes it's way above. And um, here we see the walls falling and their ability to um, to move forward and, and to wake up to you being increased, but I don't know exactly where it lands. They also have the Queen of Crystals, which tells me that as, as quickly as it begins, it may also end. We saw this over here, too, with the Seven of Cups or the Seven of Water energy um, was the Seven of Shells. It has that you've got all these options, but they quickly can get lost in those and lose their momentum. And it has to do with them talking themselves out of it, negative self-messages, um, not high not high enough levels of self-worth to go through with it what happens if they reach out and you reject them or don't answer you know that's one of the things that they worry about and especially because in some cases there's been it's been so long since the communication has occurred um, or the last communication may not have been too long ago but it was so awkward and unpleasant that they aren't sure how you're going to respond they don't feel like the wind is at their back um, that's one of the things that I was kind of wondering, especially in this energy. It's kind of got a, a much more improved energy over what we've seen over the last couple of days. But they're still a little bit beaten down by what they've seen over the last couple of days. So that energy is not ready. Um, it's not bounced back yet. Um, Queen of Feathers in reverse, though. This is promising. Um, Queen, Queen of Feathers in reverse is about dropping things like a hot potato. And in this case, they're saying, well, it's more of a warm potato and I'm going to put it on this plate next to me. You know, so it's not dropping it and getting rid of it. There's there's less of a rash decision happening here. So even if you see them not reach out, it doesn't necessarily mean that, um, depending on how things go in the near future, you may, you may uh, still see them having awakened to you. I get that... Um, Yes, your person is waking up um, to you in a new way. So like I said, some of you are already in communication. A lot more of you are not, but their energy is right next to you. There's been a lot of fluctuation with them in this energy in the last couple of days in particular. Some of it's been a little bit tough and they're bouncing back from that a little bit, kind of feeling a callous across their emotions. Um, and they've got this three of shells, which unfortunately for, um, for, for them, I guess, 
and depending on the situation, how you feel about it, could feel unfortunate for you as well. This is about that third party energy. So um, one of the things that is very much a factor, and we saw this in yesterday's reading, is that third party energy is part of the reason they don't feel like the, um, the universe is at their back. Um, but I, oh, the wind is at their back. I don't necessarily know that, um, that that stops them. I think it slows them down, but doesn't necessarily stop them. There is something here, and it comes with that three of shells that feels like they don't have a choice in something. This is the energy that feels like they might not reach out. Um, and then that, right here, we have the Knight of Acorns saying, here's what feels like they will. They're very much on, um, on something that... that <laughs> It's like this, but they're very much on a level, on a balance, trying to figure out which way they're going to go. They are afraid to reach out, afraid to jump in, feeling like they have few choices here with you, but also feeling like they have um, few choices against going your direction. This delay that we both, um, that, that both of you probably need is is very real so them not jumping in is probably fine but I don't know that they can do it there's such a push for them to move your direction and to interact with you um that they they have a lot going on there but they also have this this is an honorable mention but they've got some broken heartedness here um that's that's impacting them. And this is brokenheartedness that stems from issues from long, long ago. It's that thing that we constantly are seeing ha having happened in their childhood. Only this time, um, I think we're seeing impacts of it somewhat recently. So they've had a death in the family recently that has, um, and I know that's true for one of you or two of you, I guess now that I think of it more than that, but still, um, there's been a death in the family that they're still adjusting to. Maybe a couple of deaths in the family that they're still adjusting to. Um, but they're constantly kind of feeling like there's a lot of swirling and tied in this energy. It kind of um, is inconsistent, but you may... This is This is having them just not even necessarily coming back and saying, I want to see you and be with you for the rest of my life. It's not necessarily that. It's, could we go to lunch? You know, I mean, it's that kind of thing. Or, hey, I'm in town briefly, would love to stop by and see you. Um, but there's also that kind of feeling that they already know, they, they are feeling like they haven't figured out what to do when they run across happiness. It's that lesson we were talking about up here. Um, and it's what stays their hand. It's what slows them down. This eight of acorns is energy that is slowing down. Um, and so there's a lot that kind of pushes them back, but the, it's very real what this person wrote to me about how they could feel like their person was on the edge of waking up to them. But the last question they asked was whether or not they should be prodding their person to, um, to wake up to them. Like, should I be nudging them awake in this should I be the the question that they asked in the next paragraph was about what form of communication would be appropriate um, but I think that should I prod them is really the greater question should I be sending a communication so for those of you who are maybe in communication but not every day trying to decide if this is a good day to initiate communication or for those of you who are trying to decide if it would be okay to send a message and just kind of remind them that you're there, not let them forget, that sort of thing, let's look to see if that's the right course of action. So this is going to be what you need to consider given what else is on this table, but particularly about how and if and how you should be prodding them into waking up to you. Is this a good day for that? Because um, we see them moving that direction. Ooh, we got the lover's card that has come out. Okay, um, that's, that's the bond. That's the, ooh, tell us more. All right, seven of, oh man. Okay, let me see how it gets clarified before I make any assumptions. So we have the lover's card, which this, this totally feels like the rest of the reading. You know how all through the reading, it's like, oh yes, they're feeling like they're waking up to you. Oh, but they feel like they can't move forward. Oh, but they feel like they might, they can't help it. Oh, but there's this third party energy that's really kind of the, the awareness of that is holding them back and making them feel like they don't have choices. It is all over this. Um, so we've got the lover's card here saying that there's a strong bond here and that they definitely have, um, 
they are ripe for that receiving that communication. But then we've got the seven of swords here that says it's going to get twisted in the communication. Something about it um, isn't going to be interpreted properly and it's going to stimulate a lack of trust in them. Something that, that causes it to, to not, to not go well. So they feel open to the communication, but they're going to do something with it that doesn't, that doesn't work in your favor is what it feels like. Let's see what else comes out with that. Um, yeah. All right. So something does not come across properly. When the communication occurs, if you were to make a, a communication, there's going to be a misinterpretation on their side that's fairly significant and sets you back. Um, the seven of acorns here, you're going to know it fairly immediately. Um, as soon as that communication is underway, you're going to know it was the wrong thing to do to hit send and there's nothing you can do about it. Um, even if they don't respond to it, they're going to be um, basically off and running again. It's going to be something that tips the scales, but not in a good direction. And it's all about this pain. Now, the problem is it's going to re-trigger you. Okay, this is a distinct do not reach out response. Um, because you're going to trigger both of you if you end up doing, if you end up reaching out. Um, it will trigger both of you and it's going to set some things back a little bit. Um Hmm. Yeah, it's definitely a feeling of not recommending that you reach out, but yet them being like, they may still reach out to you. There is active change occurring here. They, they shouldn't reach out to you is what this is saying. Um, there is active change occurring here. If they reach out to you, they may also generate this sort of situation. So if they do, I would say be careful in how you respond because there's a very high likelihood that they're going to take it wrong, whatever you say. Um, they're going to take it wrong and then they're going to feel this need to kind of with the king of acorns in the reverse here, take over the situation, maybe feel a little bit controlling about it. They're going to tell themselves some stories that don't necessarily match. May take a little while for that to get undone, especially with... Um, with the fact that you may see yourself reblocked, um, all of a sudden, then your self worth starts to decrease. There is a feeling that things fall out of balance between the two of you. Their energy remains very close to you, and yet that would be a situation where, if they decide to run off and be somewhere else again, it could impact you fairly negatively from um, a triggering standpoint. And it, it looks like it triggers them too. So. They are not emotionally stable enough to take a communication at this time um, in a positive way. They they got to be left alone at this point. But yet you might re you might hear them reach out to you. You guys are in the process of building something very important that needs a little bit of time to heal, and it's like something that's in a cast needs some time to solidify. This would create additional damage that would take things longer to heal. So that's, it's a very strong message not to do that. Um, hmm. Okay. Well, I mean, I guess we asked the question because we want the answer and it's giving us an answer. It's not saying you're never going to speak again. In fact, it's, um, you may hear from them, but just be careful if you do, because they are not necessarily, um, ready for that. There is a sense that you would be able to, um, you're going to be stronger without that communication anyway, because with that triggering, that makes sense. Because with that triggering that wants to happen there, um, it's, it's not, that's something that's going to generate a setback, honestly, for both of you. I'm curious about that. Like what else is, we're going to dig more into this when we get into the extended to find out what's happening with your person because they want to come towards you badly. We're going to look at what's stopping them and what's pushing them. I think that may be how we separate things out um, in the, and I guess it'll be about this third party because that's what's stopping them. That and the feeling that they don't have a choice, but because it's related to that third party. So if you don't see that um, it's them coming to you. It's really because of that. And yet their own healing around it is almost on hold as a result. They've got some things that they need to let go. You've got some things that you need to let go, but you stand to see a much 
brighter day. So there's still some positivity that, oh, and I'm done. I'm done pulling. There's um, still some things, some very positive things that come from this, but it's a matter of, okay, you kind of have to stay under radar for today unless, um, if you do hear from them, be careful because it's easy to set each other back and it, you are not advised to reach out on, in this energy um, because it has a tend it would have a tendency to set you back. We know there's already a setback and we already know that the two of you probably need the time in order to um, to help with your respective healings and to find time for that, but they may not be able to wait. Um, and they may, you may not be able to control them, um, their set, the fact that they're going to create that setback, setback. Um, but let's go ahead and look into the extended. We'll go there now. Um, if you are interested, the link is going to be down below. We're going to look in to see what's happening with this third party and what's stopping them from moving forward. We're also going to look into the things that are pushing them to move forward, like this Knight of Acorns energy. Um, pushing them to move forward and this it also to look into kind of this new perspective they seem to have we knew they had one now we're kind of seeing it blossom but it's like a lesson they don't know how to use so we'll look into that there we'll also look a little bit more into what you should be doing instead what is the lesson that you want to focus on um, at this time and we will see what happens there otherwise if I don't see you at the extended I will see you in tomorrow's reading